Mehdi of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video is a very highly debated topic, algae in your reef. I went and I did some research, basic stuff, not complicated stuff, and I came out with very interesting topics and things that I personally didn't even know. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the video, but when I hit the, the topic of foods and also of the uh, lights, I'm going to go ahead and uh, first of all, when it comes to foods, I'm going to show you the two types of foods that I have here. And then when it comes to the uh, scheduling of the uh, Radeon XR15 uh, Pro, I'm going to go to my laptop and I'm going to show you my actual schedule. But that will be at the end of the actual video. So let's take a deep dive and find out. Hold on one second. Okay, and here we are in front of the tank, a full shot of the tank. And then I'm going to start to explain what I found out. So here we go. Okay, algae is found in our reefs all around the oceans of the world. Now, algae is beneficial when in balance with elements found in the reef. Algae is also needed for all kinds of herbivorous fish like tangs. And that I'll uh, put it on top of the video. Now, algae is a normal occurrence in your reef, but if out of control, it indicates an imbalance found in your reef. Signs of an imbalance in your reef tank would be, for instance, A, high nutrients, more import of nutrients versus less export of those nutrients. And then B, higher than normal levels of phosphates and nitrates. On the topic, although you may test both and find zero value. Now, this does not necessarily mean you don't have them. It could mean the algae has consumed it, thus showing zero values upon testing. Although you should have a low amount of phosphate and nitrates present in your reef tank for coral growth. And that's totally true. Um, I, I mean, I did more in-depth into it, but when you're testing for phosphates, you're only testing, I'd say, around 20% of the actual phosphates. Uh, there's, there's a couple of phosphates found in your water, and when you do these tests, no matter if it's the Hanna Checker, the Salifer test kits that I use, what you're testing is 20% of the actual targeted phosphates. Now, going more you know, elaborating more on what I just said on this little research that I did, is yes, uh, totally true. You can go ahead and you can test uh, your nitrates and phosphates, and you might get a, a zero reading. And you'll say, wait a minute, how can this be? And I still have uh, uh, algae, either hell algae, uh, or the algae that I tend to have, which is like a slime type of green algae. How can that be when I'm getting zero? Well, it's actually because that algae, uh, it, uh, it, uh, to thrive, of course, it's a photosynthetic type of algae. It, it thrives on, on photosynthesis, so since it lives on that, then of course it needs light. But also, uh, the nutrients that keep it going, like, you know, when you feed your corals and your fish, that it, it, you know, they grow and all that, Believe it or not, it of course, is nitrates and phosphates. So if you have a certain amount of uh, algae, it's going to consume it. It's, it's going to eat it. Uh, and then when you test, you're going to see, wait a minute, I have algae. But yet, when I test, I'm getting a zero reading and I'm uh, on both nitrates and phosphates. And that's the uh, reason why I'm just, you know, explaining a, a little more in depth. And then finally, C. Uh, higher or lower light levels for your tank um, is, is needed sometimes. For instance, for green algae problems, you would need less light levels. And that's what I was explaining briefly now, because it's a photosynthetic type of algae. So in that case, you would need lower levels. And I'm going to go into that next. And then versus brown algae. When you have brown algae uh, issues, uh, you would need more light levels uh, to actually combat that brown algae. Now, if you decide not to uh, do a total blackout for a few days 
um, you know, with, with your tank. This means actually that you would um, cover your tank completely except the uh, top because of the nitrogen cycle. You need uh, uh, nitrogen actually breathes out of your water. So if you were to do a total blackout and, you know, your lights are off and all that, but if you decide not to go that route, then the other approach would be reducing your light spectrum. Now that, when I say that specifically and very important specifically, we're talking about the red and the green uh, light spectrum. You should have them uh, near zero or actually zero. Uh, those two colors or wavelengths, shall we call it, have been proven that uh, when it comes to the uh, green algae, it tends to thrive uh, photosynthetically uh, when it comes to the red and green algae. They, I mean, it's like a, like a booster for the green algae. Also, when it comes to lighting, your uh, photo period should be brought down or close to eight hours. Now, now when I'm talking about the photo period, I, I'm not talking about when the lights, uh, of course, I'm, I'm talking about the, the radians. Uh, as you must notice on the chart, which I'm at the end of the video, I'm, I'm going to give you a snapshot. Uh, the, the lights will start at zero, like, you know, uh, sunrise, and then they ramp up. Now, uh, I'm not talking about when it ramps up totally to the end of that period, and then it starts to ramp down. Uh, I'm not talking about that period. I'm talking about the grand total period from the moment the lights start to kick in and ramp up to the moment that the lights ramp down and they completely turn off. That point between point A and B, the total amount should be kept around, now I'm talking about not spe specifically exactly, but around eight hours. Now, when it comes to adjusting your spectrum, you should do it within increments of 5% and weekly. That's very important. You shouldn't be playing around with the lights, like I'm going to lower this or, or raise that in a couple of days. No, wait a minute, let me uh, change it again and, change, and keep changing it. It's uh, the full spectrum is going to go uh, uh, out of whack and your corals are going to be affected uh, by the up and down. So what you should do is if you decide that you do need to ramp up or ramp down a specific uh, channel, or spectrum, shall we call it, you should do it in increments of 5, 5%, and then wait, like for a week or two, and then do the other adjustments if, the, if you didn't reach that specific goal. Then uh, another thing that I found out definitely, which this I already knew from the past, but definitely water changes. You should do them either weekly or bi-weekly, and I would shoot for 20%. And also, one other thing that I found out is you should actually remove as much algae as you can to reduce not only the algae, but actually the nutrients which are found in that uh, algae and as a total in your reef. Then another thing that I found out is also reduce your feeding of both your fish and corals. Now this again, as I said at the end of, of, uh, of the topic, I'm going to show you what foods I use. But um, again, as I said, reduce your feeding of both your fish and coral foods. Now, this, this I, I really was more or less into it, but I didn't know the specifics. But pellets tend to be more concentrated versus frozen foods, which 80% of it is actually water. So uh, frozen foods will introduce less nitrogen, phosphates, and nitrates into your reef versus the pellet foods. Now this uh, holds true if you're overfeeding pellet foods. If you kind of measure your pellet foods and give only the pellets that the fish actually eat, eat, you're in good shape. But if you feed a little more and they stay there, as I just mentioned on this research that I did, and they have more nutrients, it is going to pump up your uh, nitrogen, phosphates, and nitrates. And then lastly, uh, you should use RODI water, uh, not tap water, when making uh, your, your uh, water, either 
for your uh, ATO or actually to mix your uh, salt. So when you have, uh, when you have a, a RODI water, I do highly recommend a TDS meter and the uh, out of your TDS meter should read zero. Now, if it changes to one, I would say don't go any higher than two uh, TDS before definitely you should change your uh, first, your resin, and then of course your uh, sediment and your carbon filter. But I would wait no more than six months to actually completely change all three. That's very important because if you use tap water, tap water, no matter if it's filter, but and all that from uh, you know from the main source, it does have chlorine and other elements that are bombarded into the, your actual tap water. So if you're using tap water, it will create uh, algae and uh, phosphates and nitrates in your reef tank. So definitely, and this is, I mean, a plus, uh, you should use RODI water. And now what I'm gonna do is, now that I finished this research, I'm gonna give you a snapshot of the uh, actual settings that I did on my tank, well actually on the lights, and also I'm gonna show you the uh, foods. So hold on one second while I switch the uh, camera. Okay, so here we are. This is a screenshot of what I have presently now. So if you look, let's uh, check first the duration, what I was talking about. Okay, I, I had it at uh, 12 hours intervals, which would be, uh, before I had it from 10 to 10. So what I did is I chopped off one hour. So now if you look down here, it will tell you that the total duration actually is 11 hours, not 12. Now, the gold, as I just finished uh, explaining, is actually eight hours. But you can't do it all in one shot like I was uh, explaining. When it comes to any type of lights, especially the LEDs that have this feature where you can use what they call the sliders, which is on the left-hand side, and I'm going to go to that section now. What happens is that you cannot be playing around with this every two or three days and all that because it'll actually shock the actual corals. So, and the same thing holds, holds true for this uh, area here when it comes to the duration. So I have brought it down to 11 and see what actually happens. Okay, now, uh, and then what I was explaining is like here, you see like uh, I have the lights that start at, at, at one and then um, they go all the way to 630. The whole photo period is where you would have to bring it down and down no less than eight hours. Now from 12, I brought it to 11. This should, should actually stay more or less within range. So I'm talking about that uh, I have it like from one to 630. That's a, a good amount of total um, ramped up lights uh, for the actual corals. Now, let's go to, to the sliders on this side here. Now, if you see, this is the adjustments that I actually made due to the fact that I am getting a certain amount of algae. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and I brought down the UV. It's been proven upon research that I did that the UV spectrum can actually cause algae. So I went ahead and I brought it down to 60%. Mind you that the template I'm using is the AB+. Now the AB+, the UV, and all these others would be at 100%. But well, the UV being known that it can cause algae, I brought it down to 60. Then uh, these other corals, I kept them at, at 100. The whites, the two whites, I have them, as you notice here, I have them at 19%. But I was talking about uh, briefly about the green and reds which are a big contributor to algae being uh, I know I'm repeating myself but I thought I mentioned it again because of the topic I'm in now uh, 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 the green algae it's a photosynthetic algae it lives out of lights besides also high nutrients but as I mentioned before uh, the green and red are the big contributors. So what did I do? I, I ramped them down all the way to zero. I went ahead, I put them on zero. And then, of course, the brightness, I have it at 45. So this is what I was talking about when it comes to adjusting 
your photo period, which will be uh, your gold is no less than eight. I brought it down to 11. And then uh, reiterating, then I UV, I brought it down to 60. And then, whoops, let's take this out. And then uh, the whites are down. And then the uh, green and red completely down to a zero. So now I'm going to get next to the tank and I'm going to show you the uh, foods. Hold on one second. Okay, and I'm going to show you the two foods that I use. So uh, I've been using the PE pellets and they're great, but as I mentioned on this research that I did, they're very high in nutrition. So you have to be careful to not uh, overfeed. One thing that I found out that I forgot to mention is when you're using pellets and you do have an algae problem, do not use your uh, auto feeder. If, if you happen to have an auto feeder, do, do not use it because it might feed too much. And again, like I mentioned, that the uh, pellets are high in nutrients, so you actually need less if you do have an algae problem. Then uh, the frozen foods, the one that I use is what's called the, uh, the reef pack, um, multi-pack. Um, you can get the PE uh, mices, which is also good. And again, as I mentioned, all of these uh, frozen foods, they contain about uh, 80 or 85 percent of water and the rest is actually the uh, item that you're going to introduce to the tank. What I do recommend when it comes to frozen foods is to actually uh, dissolve it uh, a little bit on a regular uh, RODI. I know not too many people do it. They just, if you, I'm pretty sure you've seen other videos where they just get the uh, actual uh, cube and dump it in. Yeah, that's fine when the tank is a one 200 gallon tank, a 60 gallon tank, but on a, on a small nano, on this one that's a 40 gallon, you, you have to be a, a, a little curf, uh, careful. What I do is I just dissolve it on a little cup and I just add them. So that's basically it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. You found it interesting and educational and informative. If you did, hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, next to the, the uh, subscription button, there's a little bell. That's the notification uh, button. And if you do that, you activate the notifications. Every time I upload a video, which is recently weekly, you'll be the first ones to be notified that I uploaded one. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you for watching this video and all the others. Keep safe and coming up. I hope all of you have a, a happy 4th of July safely. And until next time, bye-bye.